Hello and Namaste, my name is Nidhina Gori and welcome back to my channel. If this is your first time around here, then hey, welcome to my channel. I make a bunch of videos about career. In today's video, we're discussing CPA Canada. Now, if you remember, I had a time ago a video tha on CPA Canada with an Indian Chartered Accountant. Uh, I'm going to link it up right here so you must be able to see it. If you are an Indian Chartered Accountant who is considering doing a CPA Canada as your next career move, then I highly recommend that you check out the video that I had done with an Indian Chartered Accountant who has CPA Canada. Kiya hai. Why? Because uh, ICAI, which is our institute, has a MOU here and with that MOU, you get a lot of exemptions and you just have to write the CFE exam. So, as I said, the MOU is only applicable to a bunch of chartered accountants from different countries. India is also one of them. If you are not a chartered accountant, or if you have done CS, or CMA, or MBA, or you have not done anything, you are basically figuring out how to do CPA in Canada, kaise karna hai. then this video is relevant to you. So make sure you watch this video till the end. And today I have Bhavneet with me who is going to talk about her journey of doing CPA Canada. She started from scratch and did it till the end. If you like this video, then don't forget to show it down with a thumbs up below and make sure you let me know in the comments what else would you like to see on my channel next and subscribe to my channel. Now let's go straight into the video and learn about how can we become CPA Canada. Yeah, so um, I'm Bhavni. I came uh, from India to Canada in December 2014. So by this year, it will be six years. And I started with a post-graduation, uh, a post-baccalaureate diploma. Sorry, when I started, the name was post-graduate diploma, but then it changed to post-baccalaureate diploma in accounting. Okay. Uh, that kind of helped me with a CPA prep courses. So CPA have three stages, CPA prep, PEP, and the final one. So I started with that and now I've been working at KPMG since the last two plus years. And uh, I'm a CS back from India and I'm also doing my master's in taxation law. I'm also completing my CGP, which is the Canadian version of CS. And um, yeah, that's, that's about it. Okay, that's a lot in one person. Oh, so tell me one thing, was there any exemption when you came in as a CS from India for your CPA? No, so one of the main requirements if you come as an international student is you need to do a degree, like you need to do something. So uh, the first stage that you said is CPA prep. Um, how, yeah. how does one become eligible? Like, Is there like a credits criteria, you know how US CPA ha has 150 credits, is there anything like that in CPA Canada? Um, so for getting admission into say uh, prep or let's say any post degree diploma, you need to have a graduation. Uh, yeah, so uh, you really do not have to be into accounting. You really do not have to do BCom to get into a post degree diploma, right? You can also do if you have a BTEC or let's say you have a degree in IT, engineering or something else. Because mm -hmm. I've seen people um, who have done DAP, a uh, diploma in accounting from UBC and other universities who have background from all the parts, like anything. Mm -hmm. And okay. you can just go into accounting because I think the prep course kind of preps you so well for being in, like go into the next level of CPA that um, you can be into any field and you'll do good. Okay. As um, really and <laughs> uh, do you, for the CPA prep, um, can somebody sitting in India apply for it or do you have to come here and um, study something? Yeah, so you really need to come here because uh, that degree will give you the study visa to come to Canada. Because mm. you can only do CPA in Canada if you have a valid visa. So that means a study visa, work visa, permanent residency or citizenship. So any visitor visa won't work. And to study that you need a specific like the special uh, post-graduation study permit and only with that you can do your CPA prep here. Okay and if you want to do the CPA prep in India or if you only want to come here for exams is that possible? Uh, no I don't think universities will allow that. Okay all right um, so once you're done with your CPA prep then you have your CPA PEP. What yeah. was that like? 
Yeah, so PEP we can we can like uh, like compare it with IPCC India if okay. like the comparison is required. Um, it has four parts. So the first one is Core One. Uh, Core One kind of assesses you with um, financial accounting and management accounting, financial reporting, like mm-hmm. all that stuff and then core two is more focused on management accounting like it's it's more of management accounting part and then those are two main ones so only if you're done those two you can move to the next level which is elective and in elective especially in Canada we have four options the first one is assurance tax finance and um, uh, performance management so again MA like management accounting um, the good thing is you can choose your field. So let's say um, I was in public practice. We are kind of it's it's required for us to do assurance and tax since that's what we deal with. And if you are let's say you are in industry, right, and you are doing some kind of um, finance job, you can just opt for finance and performance management since that is something that you'll be doing. Exam needs seventy five percent to get through it. Yeah, so exam, I think, um, like, it's curved marked. So uh, you just need to do your best. You just need to be in the top 75 and then yeah. you pass. Okay. So the pass rate is, uh, it's pretty decent in Canada, especially for um, core one and core two. Like, I think it, it's kind of 90%. Mm. It's close to like 80 to 90. So um, a lot of people go through. Okay. And so uh, how, how much time can you take between the prep and the pep uh, so once you're done with prep so one of okay so if you are let's say uh, if you're a permanent resident or if you're a citizen and you have done let's say BTEC right bachelor in IT or something mm-hmm. um, you can just do the CPA prep courses from CPA Institute like all the institutes all over the provinces so if you have done that then you can get admission to pep right away like after since CPA has like you did your prep through CPA so it will be easier to get through PEP but then if you have done through a college or a university like I did you need to send your transcript assessment and with that CPA will make sure I think the transcript assessment takes about six weeks Mm -hmm. and then they will make sure that you know everything is met and there's a GPA requirement too so you need to have like 65 percent in the main accounting courses like auditing and advanced financial accounting Mm -hmm. so everything is met and then only they will give you the thumbs up that you register for your courses and you can go ahead all right so once you write your pep exams now we're also done with the pep um how much time can we take before writing finals you know like how in india how we had article show but like cpa us had nothing like that you can just keep writing exams and you're done so yeah. how does that work for uh, the finals and how many exams are there in finals? Yeah, so for final, um, so one thing with PEP is those exams are all the year round. So you can do core one in September, you can do in Jan, you can do in mm. um, you know, July. But then the there are two other capstone modules that we need to do. So capstone one and capstone two and then CV. So those two capstone one and two, they're only available um in sometimes in jan if there is a may 2020 like there was a may 2020 cp this year but it did not happen Mm -hmm. um but mostly people take it in may may to july and then capstone two from july to september which will eventually lead to Mm cp so capstone two is kind of cp capstone two prepares you really well to write your final exam Mm -hmm. um so that is kind of a fixed timeline for that so usually people write their cp in september it's only once a year and how was capstone one and capstone two yeah so i really loved capstone one so what we were done is um based on our postal codes cpa bc they put us into a group of five so i think it was me and one other guy from kpmg and then there was another person from deloitte and two people from industry so it was different you know variety of experience that we all were bringing and we all were put together into a group and we had a big like a big business case and we had to do like we had to prepare a board report for that case 
and at the end of it we had to present the report to a panel of uh, jury so jury was usually cpa people who were past cpa people who were volunteering or maybe they work for a cpa pc so um it was a nice one since uh, we kind of were meeting every second week and uh, it was more of teamwork i would say yeah and the main thing about capstone one is that is the same case that's going to come in your final exam day one so the case i had was marmani inc like it was a company they were doing some reorg and stuff and they went ahead 5 years in my day one case mm-hmm. like one of a uh, uh, common final exam um so that same company is now in 2025 so it's really important to do capstone one for anyone who's writing cp even if you're doing it from uh, like even if you're just writing cp i would still recommend everyone to do um capstone 1 and 2 okay and then what was capstone 2 like yeah so capstone 2 was same as cp like we um so i did capstone 2 with when i was at kpmg so i was given like a study schedule like how i have to study it included um it was given by cpa too it included all the cases we are supposed to write mm-hmm. and then uh, it's called nmc nmc's national marking center um so cpa alloc- uh, allocate a lot of cpa ri- like past cpa writers who can mark our cases um and we write the whole case in 90 minutes 45 minutes 3 hour 5 hours and we send it to them for responses so mm-hmm. they mark it give us feedback how we are doing and um and then cp of course you know uh, we covered it in details previously so what was your experience like with cp it sounds like a very different course the, the course structure doesn't sound um like anything that i know so what was your experience doing this yeah so um like since i did my cs back in india i wrote eight exams in a row when mm-hmm. i was writing my final and it is very much different than um cs i would say um i don't know much about cs since um i don't have experience in that way mm-hmm. but then from yes since here the good thing is we have the income tax act we have uh, the cpa handbook so we can obviously you know if we, if we don't know anything it's not your dumb and you cannot write anything just leave that section no you can do that you can rather jump into the handbook you have all those resources you can search for it and if you find something you can still write your answers and your answers don't have to be like you know super long and mm-hmm. then uh, everything in in time that definitely sounds very interesting so how how long do you think this whole thing the whole cpa journey will take how long the whole cpa journey will take and the shortest time that somebody can do it in okay um so let's say you're starting your prep which mm-hmm. i believe it can take anywhere from 1 year to 2 year um let's go with like um 1 year and 8 months right mm-hmm. and then you're taking like a little break if you want or even not you are starting right away yeah. the prep will take 1 year of course right oh. and then you can only write your exam in september so that's another 1 year uh-huh. so i think if you are if you're doing your cpa it will definitely take you minimum 3.5 years oh. and it can 5 years 3.5 to 5 years that's what we're looking at another thing that i want to ask is is this something that Um, is this a course that people in india can do like you know how us cpa is where you can just travel to middle east and the us and write exams do you think cpa canada is something like that no no all the examination centers are in canada so mm-hmm. and you like valid visa like either a study permit or work permit mm-hmm. or permanent residency so that you can ship to write exam okay. um thing is once you know once people come to um let's say a diploma in accounting um they can get work permit and with that work permit they can apply for study permit alongside so you can have work and study permit alongside and you can do your cpa through that okay. and you know yeah so the only thing is you need to have like a valid 
work or study visa to to CPA, you cannot do anything from outside Canada. Not even from states. You can. You just need to have some hmm. valid visa. Interesting. Okay. And how expensive is doing something like CPA? Like, what do you remember approximately? How much did it cost? Yeah. Yeah. So, I would say um, CPA is not that expensive. If I look at the whole program, um, it's it's relatively cheaper. Uh, like, PEP will cost you around eleven thousand to twelve thousand. Um, it includes the annual membership fee, like thousand dollars twenty. I think thousand and twenty. I'm not too sure. Yeah, I think it's around thousand uh, dollars. It includes the membership fee that we pay every year. But it's eleven thousand for the PEP and the C fee. Yeah, okay. eleven to twelve. Eleven. Yeah, every year it kind of increases. I would say my biggest takeaway is I did not know that CPA Canada cannot be done on a visitor visa. Um, so that's really going to help a lot of people. Because I know a lot of people have been aiming to do a CPA Canada, you know, like just visit, write exams. That's how we're looking at it. If yeah, you're writing only the C fee and you are a CA from India and you're only coming for C fee, you can do in like as a visitor visa. Mm -hmm. But then if you're whole PEP, I don't think as visitor like for that you need like study permit to do it but then if you are you know if you're a ca from any other country um you can just come as a visitor visa and write your cp but then just for doing everything else like the whole cpa um you just need a valid visa okay because you have to be in canada for it yeah the examination center is only in canada so you have to be here Okay, and then all the you know the capstone one like you have to be meeting with your group regularly, um, yeah. all of that. Obviously, it means that you know you have to be in Canada for a decent amount of time. Yeah, um, that's true. Okay, okay, all right. This has been a great conversation, guys. I'm also adding uh, Bhavneet's LinkedIn link below, and um, that's a great way to reach out to her if you have any questions. Do reach out to her, connect with her. She's very active on LinkedIn. Bhavneet, we wish you all the best. Thank you so much for taking our time. This is not an easy journey uh, to explain to anyone. So thank you so much. I'm sure this is going to help a lot of people. And uh, wishing you all the best and uh, stay safe. Thank you, Nidhi. I think you're doing a tremendous job, like I told you before. Um, I think you're helping so many people, and it kind of gave me motivation looking at you that you know I can like if you know if you can do it, I can do it too. And I have like I have a goal of helping like thousand people and. I'm not even closer, so um, yeah. So let's see, let's see. I, if if anyone needs help, yeah, just just shoot me a message on LinkedIn, and I should be available. Yeah. Perfect. Thank you, my voice in reaching a bigger platform. <laughs> no, thank you so much for meet once again. Take care, and uh, all right, guys. We'll see you in the next video. Bye. Thank you.